welcome to the Average Angler channel. Um, today I'm doing a little video because a few people have asked me a question about how do I get, I, this is my clicker by the way, for those that don't know this is what we use when we've got, a, when we're having a bite, sorry when we're having a bite, when you catch a fish, so it's three pound, you go one, two, three and then you've got three, you put it in your keep net and then you catch the next fish and you go one, two, three, four, five and you've got eight. So it helps you keep a track of how much weight you've got. Why is this important? Well because a lot of fisheries enforce weight limits on the net if you put too much weight in the net you lose the net which means you've wasted your time catching it all so that's what this is this is we call them clickers i'm not sure if that's the correct term for them but in match fishing circles we call them clickers so they come like this or they come with a string on or whatever and they're quite a pain in the bum because if you're on a side tray like that if you're picking them up you've got to click it put it back down again and you might put it underneath something and move it around and you're trying to find it and you just lose valuable time and it could easily drop into the lake and really drive you mad so I made a little, I don't know why I'm setting that to zero, but I made a little uh, bracket that held my clicker here on my side tray. And a lot of people noticed it in my videos, I didn't mention it, and were asking me in the comments underneath my videos, where do you get that from, where do you get that from? So I thought I'll do a video about it. So that's what this video is all about. How I make my holder is I make it out of plastic, ends up looking something like this. This is an old one that I, well, I've, sort of made and i want to improve it a little bit so this is a good opportunity for me to improve it and uh, show you guys at the same time so it's just plastic and it kind of clicks on like that and clicks off like that which is what we want so how do, how do we go about making that's not easy just to make something out of plastic as we know well it might not be as hard as you think it is this is something that i purchased years and years ago and i've made loads of little bits of bobs fish and tackle out of it it's called polymorph i think that's a brand name it's basically a, it's basically plastic granules that when you get them warm when you get them quite hot really they just turn into a, a moldable plastic end up looking like this this is the, this is just starting to cool down now this is quite moldable the plastic so that's those that have been heated in hot water in boiling water from the kettle and and it becomes moldable and it stays moldable for a few minutes until it gets down to a temperature that just sets hard so sounds like oh that's dead simple it does take a little bit of getting used to um in order, you know, a few, in order to get the shapes that you want sometimes it's not as easy as you think it is so i'm just going to do do uh, my holder for this and how i did it and um and obviously it's going to be different for you if you've got a different side train a different thing but uh, you know different size clicker or whatever or different number of clickers but the the principles will still be the same so you, still be able to use it. you might be able to pick up on the camera that's just started to lose its um transparency and start to go a bit opaque but i just thought i'd pre-mold some up just so that you can see you're going to take that into that. What you want to do is you want to take some of your plastic beads, and you don't want a lot. Put a cup on the scale on the scale zero it, and just put about ten grams. It'll be it'll be fine. Probably get away with about eight grams to be fair. A lot of it, a little bit goes a long way. We're not using a lot of plastic for this project. Bearing in mind that this, you know, you buy these bags in a kilo, and they're not very expensive. This stuff goes a long, long way, so it's really a good value. And then literally, I've just boiled this kettle, just pour the boiling water straight over the top of it. Completely just sink it to the bottom. Now, I don't know if you can see that there. I don't know if the camera's picking up on it, but those beads, you probably can't even see them on the camera because they've already gone transparent. So now I've just got a pile of transparent plastic spheres at the bottom of this cup. And I want to get them out, but I don't, I don't want to um, put my finger in because it's boiling hot water. So you just use a teaspoon. It's really, really clean, this stuff. And it doesn't stick to the cup at all. So you can you can use the best cups in the house if you want. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't stick at all when you end up with this. Okay, at the moment, it's still, it's still balls. But you can quickly just mush it together into, into a shape. And you want to work quickly because... Obviously, your hands are cold and you're cooling it down. So the first thing you want, what I tend to work with, if I can, is make work with ball balls or cylinders, because you need a nice something, an, an even consistent shape to start with, so that when you mold it around, whatever you mold it around, it looks even and consistent. Otherwise, it just looks messy. Trust me from experience. So I'm just making this into a rough cylinder. It's around about two and a bit inches long, and this is going to be the part of the Part of the bracket that just wraps around just wraps around my um side tray so i just wrap it around my side tray and i'm just and i'm squeezing it so it's actually touching the side tray and i want it to be a tight fit 
You want to stick on that piece there. And if anyone else, just it doesn't really stick. That bottom piece keeps falling down, probably too much weight there. So now if you're not happy with it, like I'm not happy with that, it just starts to set. You can drop it back in the hot water, leave it for a few seconds and just remould it. So that's what we'll do. So that was a good ex although that wasn't what I planned. As long as the water's still really, really hot, we're back to quite quite transparent again and we can just roll it and try again. If I had too much plastic underneath and it was just making it fall away, I want it to I want this plastic to form that square. That's nice. So it doesn't stick it kind of it's kind of tacking to it but it won't it isn't sticking it won't it will come off when it's gone hard i'm going to just take you off this stand so that you can see what we've done we've molded that plastic coming up there we are we've molded that plastic around not quite gone to the bottom there so we've got a bit of a gap and then as we go underneath we've molded it around I want to get the camera to focus, give me a second. It wants to focus on my shelves. There we are. So we've moulded it around so it's flat. Now we're just going to let that dry. Let's say dry, dry sorry, going to let it cool. 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes or so, because there's quite a lot of volume there. And um, once it's gone completely white again, I'll bring you back. Five minutes, less than five minutes it's been, and you can see that's gone hard. I'm just gonna, it's, gone, it's gone hard and white. and it pops up and it wants to stay in that shape so now we've oops, dropped it so now we've got a clip when i'll pop it on so we've, the reason i left that gap see the gap was so that when i put when i push that onto there because it's plastic it'll, it'll flex a bit and then it's on and it's on there i mean it's, it moves ever so slightly but we're not talking you know we're only holding a clicker so we ain't got to worry too much if you want it to be a tighter fit you can Get some sticky back foam and just put it inside one of the there and it'll just it will just load the plastic a bit more so we've made the part of the clamp that that is going to be holding holding onto the on onto my um side tray if you like you might need to come up with a slightly different design for your side tray if you haven't got if you haven't got a profile like this but you know i'm sure it won't be that difficult to come up with something perfect so now we're going to make the other half which is the half that holds onto the um clicker so give me a second and I'll get that set up for you. Right, so I've had a couple of goes at this bit now, so hopefully I've got it right in a second. So what I found is you need a little bit more than 10 grams. You need about 15 grams for this next phase. What I want is I want this to sit here. I don't want it to sit behind or in front because I, want, I don't want it to interfere with what's on this tray or interfere with what could be standing up on this tray. I want it to sit right on top of there so it's out of the way. And I want that plunger lot sort of pointing up. I almost want it tipping back a bit so that as I press down on it, I'm pushing down onto there. So I want the I want the bottom the bottom piece. I want to, what I want is a nice bottom piece here that I can stick onto there. Because we're gonna we're gonna mount these two th parts together eventually. So I want the bottom piece to be. I'm gonna want basically I want plastic to go all the way around this, but I want the bottom piece at the bottom to be wider. So what I found how to do that is, I've um. You can see I've used it a few times. Got a bit of black paint on where I've been experimenting off camera, but. Don't worry. So there's about 15, 15 grams of plastic there. And what I want to do is start at the bottom where I want the, where I want it to be extra thick and then work my way all the way around. Go over the top of that boss there. I'm not happy with that's gone a bit thin there. Let me, let me roll that again. It, it's, so, it's so soft at the minute that it's actually stretching as I use it. So what I say it is a bit fiddly to use, but the more you use it, the better you get at it. I'll show you that again. So make I want the end to start at the bottom, which is here. Cover the whole width of the bottom and then go all the way around. Go over this boss, which was actually designed for some string to go through. Come all the way back and then I've got more than I need, so I can have double, double at the bottom and single all the way around. And then squeeze it so that it follows that shape really nicely. Keep it away from any moving parts. And this bottom piece make a nice biggish flattish area because that's gonna I'm gonna mount that piece onto there
So, you know, it's not the most beautiful thing in the universe. But, you know, there's no points for beauty. It's just practicality. So you can, I'm hoping that you've picked up there on camera what I've been doing. And I'm hoping that you can see that we've got here quite a big lump at the bottom. And then down the side, we've got the, we've just got a thick piece. But then because it's going over that boss, it can't come out, which is nice. It comes down there. So when we, I'm just going to leave that face down on its clock, on the clock face now so that nothing's interfering with it. We'll leave that for another three or four minutes. Come back when that's solid. And then all we've got to do is stick the two together and we've got a functioning clamp. Right, welcome back guys. You might see there's a second one here. That's because I'm I'm making another one for my stopwatch, which we'll get onto in a minute. Well, this one's now gone hard. It's been five minutes. This one did take a bit longer to go hard. And you've got to make sure it has gone fully opaque because if it is slightly see-through still, it's because the middle takes a bit longer to set, especially when you've got a thick piece like that. And you don't want it soft when you're manhandling it because you'll move it and squeeze it and then dimensions will change and you'll think, why doesn't it fit anymore? And it's because you've, you've manhandled it until you've made sure it's gone proper hard. Now, I need to make this part soft and stick it onto there because this and that part a little bit soft and stick the two together and hold them together for a minute or so until they sort of sit and they're happy with one another. Now, I, it's very difficult to do that by dunking it in water because when you dunk it in water, you end up with too big an area getting hot and then the ends, and because it's a slower melting process, um, it sort of melts too much and it starts to melt inside the material, like I was saying, and then it sort of squidges out of shape and you lose you lose your um your dimensional stability, I think is the, the term. So what I use is this. Okay. Just a blowtorch. And I'll and I'll just put this in a position where it's not gonna burn my fingers if I accidentally catch it, and I'll just lick lick it really gently right on the spot where I want it to melt and it'll melt it really quickly so it's only melt but it's only melting the very very surface you'll almost just see like a sheen and then you can just stick it where you want it to go and you'll feel them stick it sink into each other you have to be careful here because that bottom one will want to spring open again so turn the flame off so you can hear me so I've just sat him on there making sure he's sitting how I want him to sit and he's kind of sticking there because it's not fully mounted. So it's quite tacky. So I'm happy that he's going to sit there, just making it sure by eye I'm happy that that's going to sit nice. And then I'm keeping that spot on piece. I'm just holding it tight so it still forms the shape of that square. Because from experience, when I've done this in the past, that's it just starts to tip back. You see that? I'm just going to hold that with them as well. Um, and having done this with from experience, the... Um, the bottom piece when you're pressing down on it it kind of makes it want to splay out and then you end up with not quite as tight a tight a bottom piece as you wanted that's why it's important not to uh, put too much heat on with that flame because if you get it really really hot it's going to take longer to get down to its setting temperature. You could spray it with a bit of water. You could get an atomizer and just spray water around it if you wanted. I'm just going to let that sit now. I don't feel like that's going to move again. Whilst that's, sit, whilst that's setting, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll show you what I've done with this stopwatch. The stopwatch I've managed to... It's still, it's still a bit... It's not, not quite set yet. But I managed to only use a small piece because in the bottom of the stopwatch there, there's... A hole that you would normally have the uh, string going through to put it around your neck and i've pushed the plastic into there so it can't come off so it's kind of like keyed on and then i've made the same thing there as i did last time and then i'll probably just again just melt that onto there and then just have that sitting there so that when i'm so that when i'm fishing it's there which means it's not again not in the way of this i could have it like that probably wouldn't be too bad but i'm gonna have it like that i'm probably i'm gonna do that one now actually while that one's Gonna, I'm just going to melt the one piece. If you can see on the camera, but oops, didn't give it enough gas. I'm literally tickling that, and it's just, it's just starting to shiny. That's just the very surface layer of the plastic melting, but nothing else. And then the heat of that plastic at the bottom will melt the plastic that we're touching to, and they'll burn the two things will just fuse together.
not slowly now it's kind of almost so it's going to keep an eye on it for a minute or two make sure it don't suddenly lean backwards with the weight so there we have it i just had to remold this one because it wasn't strong enough when i was messing about with it so i heated it back up again with the blowtorch pushed it in and then i just sort of used my finger where it was soft and just sort of blended the two together and it seems a lot stronger now this one has been fine so there you are now like we're saying because you've got that gap you can just push it and click it on same with this one you've got the gap you can just push it and click it on because it's because the because the plastic's not super super rigid it's got that bit of flex in it it will just flex but what i mean that's they're perfectly adequate to do the job those but they do wobble a bit then if that bothers you you can mess about heating this up and trying to get it tighter and tighter and tighter but what i found is over time it just slackens slightly anyway <laughs> springy there we are so what i find the better to do is get some sticky back foam like this stuff sticky back strip or anything if you've got a bit of foam or something you can glue it in there if you want it don't have to be sticky back and then just take a piece what's that like three mil or something and put it on the on the front there And what that does is it just it just closes the gap up. Now it doesn't now it doesn't want to move. Oh, you see it's not like that one. You do it the same with this one. Little tiny piece of sticky back foam. I got some of this lying around because I use it. I it, it was something I bought for my camper van. Ceiling in make, doing it making a ceiling in the camper van. So I've got some, so I haven't had to pay for it or anything, but you can find something, a piece of foam, something soft and squishy that sticks in there. So it's effectively making the box section smaller, but um, but it'll, it'll deform, so it gives you your, your grip without causing you any issues. And there you are, look, they're fine. So then if you're fishing away, you can just put your hand on that click. You can have that one there, you can have this one here. So they're out of the way. You can just zero them up. There we have it. Two holders, all done. This one, this one's a bit wonky. I'm not worried about that. This one's actually turned out quite nice, considering it was just an afterthought. Um, so I made this holder for my clicker because I was always misplacing my clicker. Where do I put my clicker? Where's my clicker gone? It's behind that bait box, behind that bait. So I dropped it in the maggot, so I dropped it here. And it, it's just, you know, 10 seconds of your time wasted when you're match fishing. It all counts. Is this a revolutionary thing? No, far from it. I mean, look at it. It's a big clunky chunk of plastic. But it lived in the bottom of my box and it just comes out at the start of the match and I push it onto there and I can just forget about it. So, you know, that's why I do it. And the only reason I've done a video about this is because I had a few um, subscribers that asked me, what's that thing that's holding your clicker? Because it, it looks quite convenient. And it's quite convenient. It's chunky and clunky and ugly, but it's convenient and it works. Um, so I thought, people have asked, I'll show them. You might not want to go to the hassle of what I've gone to, but if you've, anybody's got any better solutions or simpler solutions post them or give us a link to them i'm interested to see see you again soon